Hey, good morning. Excuse the way that I look. I am sitting on my bed. Just finished my stretches and um, some other things i done this morning. Today's date is April the 26th, so Wednesday morning. And I was reading the comment section of my last post here on IG. This will probably be running on YouTube and Facebook as well. There's a lady that I never knew before, pretty little lady. Uh, someone sent me a video of her for about the last two years over and over this sage thing. Conversation keeps coming up amongst Christians. And so I want to talk about it, play her video for you. You can hear the audio and just talk about it for a little bit. Good morning to all of you that are coming in. Please put the city and state that you are watching me from, please. City and state that you are watching me from. Okay, so anyway, let let's, let me play this, what she said. Here we go. I was into horoscopes. I was doing all the yoga stuff. Burning sage. I lived with a witch. That's what all the witches I knew did when they got into their house. You would always burn sage. It's a common thing. So it blows my mind when I see Christians doing it. They don't know any better. You don't need the bacteria out of your house that bad. Get some Lysol and be done with it. Burning sage. All you got is sage smelling demons that you just brought in there. You didn't get rid of nothing. You brought them in. I was into horoscopes. I was doing all the yoga stuff. Burning sage. I lived with a witch. That's what all the witches I knew did when they got into their house. You would always burn sage. It's a common thing. So it blows my mind when I see Christians doing it. They don't know any better. Okay, her name is Jenny Weaver. Here on IG, she's Jenny, J-E-N-N-Y, Weaver, R-E-A-V-E-R, Worships. And a little Googling, a little link I saw, and I scanned it. I didn't read it in depth, but it looks like that she... Her testimony is that she used to be a witch. A, I think it said in the article, good witch or white witch. And then she, of course, came to Christianity. There are a few people that we know in Christianity that have that testimony that either they were in a different profession, they became a preacher, or they were a different faith, and then they became a preacher. Todd Dulaney, uh, you know, he was a baseball player, that was his profession, turn, worship leader. You have the guy that was on my platform, Apostle Brian Meadows. God, I'm so glad it came in. I'm bad with names. He was Buddhist, and then he, he converted to Christianity. So let me tell you something, this one statement. Anytime you have somebody who has a, a practice or a religion and it's really, 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 really deep, then for them to jump from one religion to the next, I can't say it's all that great. However, um, for us in Christianity, because we're really, really big on conversion, almost like the Jehovah's Witness, Jehovah Witness and the five percenters, very, very big on conversion. So whenever somebody converts to our religion and leave their religion, it's like a really, really big thing. And you hear Jenny Weaver say in her live, she says that she was a witch. So she's leaving one religious practice. Excuse me, I don't know what's wrong with my signal. She left one religious practice to another religious practice. I can't say that that's all that great and a great, wonderful thing, but it is to us in Christianity because we push really hard conversion. I mean, we really into our conversion rates and our production rates like a, a company would be when it comes to making production, what my mom used to tell me they used to have to do at the factory. And so it's really big. And then we marry it to the concept that when heaven rejoices, when some one soul gets saved and all of that. But um, every religious practice has that kind of thing. It's a celebratory event when somebody comes into your particular religion. So I respect Jenny Weaver's conviction. However, what I don't see, and I don't know if she's like this or not, but I, it seems like she is. 
we don't respect other people's religion, and I think we should. We should, re we should respect other people's religious practice. And see, everything is about intention. Put the word intention in the chat. Now, if I burn sage for the sake of getting bacteria out my air, and please excuse the way I'm looking. I'm sitting on my bed. If I burn sage or spray Lysol in the air to get rid of bacteria, that has absolutely nothing to do with religion or spirituality. That is just science using a substance, a chemical or herb to purify you know, things out of my air. Intention is everything. Now, she goes on to say, which explains what she's addressing. She says, you're burning the sage for the purpose of getting rid of demons. She says, it's a sage smelling demon. And I get what she's saying in the Christian faith. It's actually sort of funny. And you know that's right because the sage ain't got the power. The power is in what we would say the name of Jesus or in the Holy Ghost. But the reality, the power is in the belief. That's why belief and faith is so powerful and so strong. There are people whose faith is so strong, they walk on nails, walk on coals. They levitate and do all sorts of, and different types and kinds of things because the brain and the human spirit is powerful outside and beyond the norm of what we see. The brain is so powerful that I can begin to tell you your past, give you the numbers, your address, and all those things totally as a result of my brain power or my soul power. It's actually called soul power. But I can take that into the church, put profit in front of my name, and have everybody food and giving me all their money and booking me around the world because I have learned how to hone my brain or soul power or mind power and use it like some of those that are actually listening to the Spirit of God and under His, um, not I don't like to say rulership, but under His 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 purpose and auspices and who are using those gifts to communicate and be the liaison between the people and God. Um, so it gets really tricky there, but intention rules everything. So if I'm burning the sage for the purpose of bacteria, I have not committed no spiritual sin um, or worship sin or moving in idolatry. I, I just am not because it's, it's a matter of intention. And if I make a decision to use oil to symbolize me purging my atmosphere, I've not committed a sin. If I take grape juice or wine and a wafer with no leaven and I say I'm eating the body of Jesus Christ and drinking his blood... This ritualistic cannibalism, this act, it is sacred and has power in it, even power to heal my body because of what I believe and I have not done wrong. Just like the other person who burns their sage for the purpose of cleansing spiritually intention, their atmosphere, I don't believe they have done wrong. If I take oil to symbolize the blood the blood ritual that was done in Goshen when they killed the animal and smeared the blood. That's a blood ritual. If I did do that using oil now, symbolizing that blood ritual or blood magic, however you want to put it, I haven't committed a sin. It's my religious practice called my intention is protecting my house from evil and darkness and low vibratory frequencies. You know, so... <clears throat> what I think we should do as Christians, because I'm a Christian, I believe in Father God in Jesus' name, and Jesus is my path and my way, but I don't have no problem with everybody else's practices and what they do, because I'm going to do what I do. And <clears throat> I think we should really get out of that whole business of judging what somebody else do. What we should judge, are you bringing harm to yourself and harm to other people? Now, that's the problem, because that ain't God. Whether you call that God, Jesus, Allah, or whatever. God is love. And the God concept is love. For us Christians, apostolics like myself, Jesus is love. <laughs> you know, 
You know, but whatever your thing is, you know, I don't have a problem with if it's not in the business of hate, if it's not in the business of being derogatory towards women or a, a certain ethnicity or gender, people of gender uh, that identify a certain gender, whatever practice. I, I don't have a problem with what you got going on. I don't have any problem with what you got going on. And I'm reminded of years ago, I forgot about this, but when I watched Jenny Weaver's video, and like I said in my thing, I love anybody that's really strong in what they believe. <clears throat> I do. Even the ones that believe strong and then say stuff that's that's wrong to other people that may be harmful. I don't like that that they did, but I still like them because they're strong in what they believe. And I just find that um, attractive. And I'm not meaning sexually. I just find it attractive. So I, Jenny Weaver, to me, I mean, I say God, I say God bless her. I say God bless her. Anybody else that's strong on what they believe. If I would say anything that somebody would say negative or critique or judgment or something I do not like, um, I just don't like how we in our churches. I mean, because that was a private moment that was made public. We in our churches, which I tell you, preachers, you got to be mindful of that. That y'all, you tend to see a cell phone with a potential million people. Um, I just do not like how we do. There's, we got to be able to push what we are for without preaching what we are against. Because I I don't know if that's really the ministry of Jesus. I think the ministry of Jesus is preaching the good news. So if you're poor, I'm going to preach about increase. If you are bound up, I'm going to preach about freedom. If you are going through something that is horrible, I'm going to preach about the, the new season. Jesus is all about the good news. So I think we should focus more on mirroring how he ministered instead of using him in the way we choose to minister. But I really think we should get under the spirit and under, I re, excuse me, I really think we should get under the leading of the spirit. Being filled with the spirit is about being under his influence, not just talking in tongues. Talking in tongues is the initial sign. But the show no proof that you got the spirit, that means, it literally means that you live a life managed by the Holy Spirit. I don't see a lot of that. I don't see a whole lot of that. I don't see a lot of that. A lot of preaching, prophesying, praise, praise. But when I look at this, how people move, I don't see a whole lot of folk filled with the spirit. And I happen to believe we ain't hardly got no more to spill with spirit. I'm a, <laughs> I, I just don't. Oh, you in the chat? I forgot to give you management thing. Yeah, I'm on IG. Um, yeah, so I I didn't thank you. Uh, that's that's what I see, you know. But hats off to everybody. Hey, cousins, I'm um, Boo. Blue Nair. That's my, what would that be my great niece? Oh, my second cousin. Yeah. I see y'all in the chat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good God. Oh. Mm. Mm. Oh, God. Them white folk. Let me tell you something. They say white folk can't cook. They can make lemonade. Hats off the Chick-fil-A. Mm. 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 Oh, my God. So, put in the chat, let me know what you think concerning this sage conversation. Uh, you said, oh, but I put blue in there. Blue on air. Excuse me. I read too fast. You need the info on the glasses. So that, what is, I don't know which one these are. These are, I forgot. It's on the box, baby. I get my number from your aunt boo and text me and I, I send it to you. <clears throat> okay, excuse how I was looking. I'm about to get a massage now. I'll see you guys later on. And make sure you sub and scribe to everything that we do. You text the word Larry Live with no spaces to 33222, which is going to be changing soon, but you still can do it. All right? I see you. Wooly, if I love this the way I say it all. <laughs>